Like many modern foreign languages departments, staff at Frederick Goff School in Scunthorpe wanted to find a way to make their subject more attractive to pupils who've traditionally found it too difficult. Quite a few pupils do think language learning is, is pointless, mainly because they struggle with it. So we thought we have to make language learning much, much more relevant. The department thought that applicability of the language was the key to attracting less able pupils. Not just what colour hair has your mum got, for example, which certainly no one's ever asked me that when I've been abroad, but things such as um, I've booked a, a double room with a bath for two nights. And you think, well, yeah, that could be useful if they just go on holiday abroad. So much more relevant. This relevance is, according to language experts, the key to engaging pupils. And relevant not only to leisure, but also basic business use. There's the work context, which is not really touched on at GCSE. For example, send really simple emails or take telephone messages. And it's not particularly high level of language that they need to use, but it's just enough probably to get past a receptionist and speak to someone else in the company who maybe speaks English. To achieve their aims, department head Andy Markham conducted research into vocational courses which might present an alternative to the traditional GCSE syllabus. He found that two courses seemed to fit the bill, the Certificate of Business Language Competency for Spanish and the Awarding Body Consortium qualification in French. We decided to introduce the certificate, which was less pressure, still a language qualification, a recognised one, but that would be a way of having 100% of students, regardless of ability, leaving Frederick Goff with two language qualifications. This programme will explain how Andy and his team have implemented the new courses and explain both their advantages and their pitfalls. Andy's experiences and advice for departments which might wish to consider doing the same can be found on the Teachers TV website. Um, if I did element one exam with you to try and remember it, can you say hello, my name is, at least? Fantastic. And if you say why are you visiting, how would you say that? Porque? Fantastic, this is brilliant. You said desayuno incluido, what does the price... The alternative curricula not only differ in the content of the courses, with more accent on vocational and everyday use of language, but also in the style of teaching. With uh, ABC French and with business Spanish, um, the, the pupils can actually see the applicability of languages to given context and I think that enthuses them. What time does it open the restaurant in the afternoon? It's a weird way of putting it. But this bit here, it does rhyme if you say it a few times. Go, Restaurante por la tarde. Restaurante por la tarde. So say, a que hora? A que hora? San Restaurante por la tarde. I think you've got to be careful with less able pupils not to almost put them in this bracket where we're saying, well, no, you're less able, so therefore you can't do languages. Because when you start thinking about it, they can, they can do English, and there are less able kids over in France who can speak French. You know, it's, uh, that does sound a little bit facetious and flippant, but it's, I think it's a fair point. It's really important for all pupils, regardless of ability, to do a language. If we don't teach them languages, we don't open their eyes that there's a massive world out there. Even if they struggle with learning the language itself, in the lessons they learn about the culture of other countries through the courses that we deliver. So if they do struggle with the phrases, then that's fine, as long as they have a go. 80 euros, desayuno incluido. 80 euros with... Fantastic. And we tell them that we've lived abroad, we've studied the languages, when we go abroad, you get such a fantastic response from anyone. Just if you try, even if you make a mistake, they appreciate you trying. So I think it is very important that they all at least have a go. Yeah, that one, that's the one that tricks people. It looks like once, doesn't it? It gets on faith. Pupils respond much better if you tailor the courses to their needs and to their ability levels. If you give them work that they just cannot handle at all, some pupils will respond by throwing it back in your face, uh, unruly behaviour, attitude problems, simply because they just cannot handle it. The, the level of work is pitched far too high for them. So you can make it relevant to them and the pupils respond much better. I had one pupil come to me and say, uh, I think this is the only qualification I'll leave school with because I just cannot cope with any of the other ones that I'm doing here. 
There is an increased amount of workload at the start of the courses, definitely. But as I say, in time, the workload reduces. So in effect, it's actually better for teachers, certainly with some of the courses, because the resources are not needed to be recreated. For GCSE, it's always changing, and it's changing you know, on quite a major scale as well. Whereas CBLC changes slightly every now and again, so the workload is actually reduced. Single, single, good. What about the difference between banyo and ducha? How can you know the difference between those? In French. Yeah, yeah, ducha in French. And those who did Russian, can you remember what shower was in Russian as well? Uh, is it du douche, just douche, so very, very similar as well. Excellent. Yeah, uh, the courses are 100% spoken word, and the pupils seem to like that. Excellent. No the benefits from a pupil's point of view is the pupil motivation. Again, they enjoy the lessons a lot more. You can really change your teaching styles, I think, having that wider variety of GCSE and that's it. So you have to write a bit of coursework today and you need to use this page and this book. CBLC Spanish, you can have them up and doing role plays, having a bit of fun. Buenos dias. Me llamo Señor Hansi. Buenos dias. Me llamo Señor Dawson. Encantado. Encantado. Hey, reservado, una habitación individual. Oh. Compañe para dos noches. En el febrero, uh, Master Spatio, por favor. ¿Cuánto cuesta? 80 euros. Ya sé, you know, incluida. ¿Dónde está el ascensor? Oh, no. Ascensor, no, no working. It's not working. Oh. <laughs> I cannot stay here. Hey, <laughs> mamá. <laughs> The pupils tend to get on better as well if you can give them that chance to work together. The pupils love the fact that there were no books on the table. I didn't have to nag them about where's their equipment, where's the homework, why haven't they done this, why haven't they done that. They normally come into the lessons quite happy now, which I think in some language lessons, that's a rarity. Hard luck. Adios, adios. Yeah. Frederick Goff is a specialist language college and therefore has access to additional funding. But teaching the alternative courses needn't be expensive. You need very, very few resources. It's a 100% spoken course, so no books are required, so you cut down on your funding in that way. Uh, you don't need a textbook. You can create your own resources to teach according to the syllabus, such as PowerPoint, as we use or flashcards, for example, or simply a role play card, but nothing more. So although the ex exam entry cost is more than a GCSE, you do make up the money elsewhere. The major increase in expense that we found um, is in the examination fees, uh, but of course the results that they end with it are more than satisfy uh, the, the costings of those exams. But if, if you are looking at money, that's the area you should look. She might say Results so far have been encouraging. The Spanish course has averaged a 90% pass rate over the past three years. The French course has only just begun and no results are in yet. It's not just the piece of paper that they get, but the result is when you walk into the lesson and you see more engaged, more motivated pupils. I think that's one of the big indicators of success, really. Get ready. Pues, una taza Excelente. Muy bien. Cuesta 90 euros. Desayuno incluido. Muy bien. See if you can remember it. Different chunks, remember. Phenomenal. Muy bien. They're breaking it down to smaller chunks. Works every time. The wide variety of language courses now on offer at the school means that pupils have more choice and teachers have more options for differentiation. We have four qualifications now from four different languages. So we really are trying to tailor the needs of our students um, to any language course available. So we have the, the brighter, the top ability pupils, um, they're studying the GCSE, the traditional course. The ABC are for the CD borderline pupils, are the ones whose motivation has been slacking a little bit recently in year nine. So this has given them a boost to carry on learning again, to see it as much more relevant. The Certificate of Achievement in French and German we offer to the weakest pupils who really would struggle and we want them to leave with at least one qualification. And then the CBLC course in Spanish is an addition. So it's just a way of getting 100% dual linguist currently. Mm -hmm. El restaurante sabría las seis. Six. Mm -hmm. Cuatro. Four. Nueve. Nine. Cinco. Five. 
Omfe. And dear. What was it? Ten. 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 I thought that's what you said. You will say I this. think they've actually pioneered the CBLC route in the last few years before many schools were starting to look at it. And I think it's fantastic to see an example of excellent practice. They've obviously honed the way that they teach it as well. So this is obviously not the first year that they've been teaching the CBLC, but after a few years they've found things that work. And I think it's something that other teachers can definitely learn from, especially if they are starting to look at the CBLC route. Also with the CBLC, there's not just a single level. There's obviously entry level, but there's also level one and level two afterwards. So it's not constrained merely to the lower ability pupils, but higher ability pupils can still go down the vocational route and take the languages to a higher level. What lessons have been learnt which could be useful for other schools seeking to implement similar ideas? If other schools were thinking of introducing different courses, such as CBLC, I would say about a year, six months in advance of when you want the course to start, that's the time to start doing the research so you know that you can fit it into the timetable, which pupils to attract, resources that you would either create or buy. So six months to a year maximum. At the start it was a bit confusing for, I'd say for all members of staff, really, that you think, right, I'm teaching Year 10 ABC French, then I'm going to Year 11 CBLC Spanish, followed by GCSE Russian, down to Certificate of Achievement German. And so it can be quite confusing, but it just means you have to be up to date on your planning. It, you get used to it the longer that you have, um, teaching the different qualifications. And timetable and issues haven't been a problem ever since. Do you think you'd be fine if we entered you for the exam coming up in a couple of weeks' time to do all of those? With another lesson before it, just to revise it. Yeah, and so modest with it. They are not just teaching the traditional languages like French and German and Spanish, but they are expanding into other languages like Russian, and so giving pupils an opportunity to, to try something completely different and also to give them maybe an edge in the workforce that other pupils don't have. And they are a pioneering school, they were one of the first to do it, and I think they can show examples of good practice, especially to teachers who are starting to look at this for the first time and wanting to know ideas about good methodology, materials, good practice that they can use. Have you seen what's on the board there? Look. A ladder day next to a ladder. A ladder goes next to a house. A ladder goes next to a wall. See how it works? Yeah. He goes next to the wall, Kelly. <laughs> but it doesn't work. All right. A ladder, a ladder day, yeah, next to. A ladder next to a wall, a ladder day next to. That works, doesn't it? It does work. Don't forget that Andy Markham has provided an account of his experiences and tips for implementing the alternative qualifications, which can be found on the Teachers TV website. Pupils should all study at least one language. So why does it have to be just GCSE if that's what's putting them off in the first place? So ABC, CBLC, Certificate of Achievement, I just have to go for it, get the pupils back on board. Some concrete evidence is our current year nine, where we have in excess of 40 pupils choosing two languages now, in addition to business Spanish. So to have a lot of the timetable taken up in years 10 and 11, just with language learning, out of their own choice, I think is quite unheard of. And I put it down to the alternative qualifications we offer. So I would say go for it. Adios. Adios. <laughs>